Okay, so this one most likely is going to be a, a fairly quick one. Uh, this cat right here is one of his pseudonyms as Marty Leeds. If you don't know who Marty Leeds is, if you haven't checked out his stuff, um, please do. Please do that for yourself. And by doing that for yourself, you're doing that for all of us. Uh, this guy's mission in life is uh, de-occulting the, the bullshit scripts that we have been indoctrinated into. Uh, that we're constantly fed. Um, this is the first Marty Leeds video that I've watched, and this is the one where he uh, is de calling the Big Lebowski. And it's, you know, this video is fucking amazing. Uh, he could have gone into it, like, uh, a little bit deeper, too, as well. Uh, but right here he's talking about paganism a little bit, so I wanted to share this because this is something that, uh, <laughs> like, like, like it says right there, Christianity and paganism, uh, most Christians will, and probably most people as well, will, uh, demonize paganisms because it's uh, what they've been taught about it about that word and uh, they fail to do any kind of inner research but also <laughs> just any research about the origins of words in general uh, etymology but also specifically about pagans or that's that's just it's not even a word I like to use it's the origins uh, before uh, religion became more mainstream in our history in this current cycle But yes, Marty Leeds, uh, he, he, he has this accelerator, accelerating effect uh, of the mind. If you can tune in and tap into what he's talking about, for, first you need to, you know, educate yourself about some of the stuff he's uh, stemming from with his uh, septenary cipher. Um, How he goes into the numbers and uh, decoding things and guess numbers may be numbing, but how the coding has been set up with the linguistics and the syntax. This is this is very essential shit here, people. Please check this guy out. Please do your own research. There are uh, many layers to the language, to all the languages, and they all they all morph and combine and flow in and out of one another, and they also contradict one another, and that's how it was set up because that's the Tower of Babel. Uh, all these languages con to confuse all the people that are really just one people but because of all the languages because of all the mentalities the sub the subs the subjugations that are portrayed and propagated to further divide us and that's how you conquer a people you get them to turn on themselves and this is what has happened and this video uh, big time really hit home with me it, um, 
to uh, recognize and realize the power of the Jew tube. This is a uh, this is a Jew world. We are living in a uh, and it's not just Jew. It's a certain uh, it's a certain people, a certain mentality. But the Jewish people keep their shit very tight, and their control s structures very in the family. So yeah, this was just a wake-up call to the Jewish mysticism and the occultism of creating an image, creating an illusion to where you convince enough people. And then... Uh, they take it from there. The only thing you need to do is place yourself in the right positions of power, influence, propagate the ideas in the right manner to where it's entertaining. The entrainment is entertainment. And then people will do it upon themselves because they've been dumbed down to that level, that degree of degradation and retardation of uh, mental numbing. For this just the other day, when you talk about paganism, it actually comes from the word paganus, okay? So paganism is commonly used to refer to various largely unconnected religions that existed during antiquity in the Middle Ages, such as Greco-Roman religions, the Roman Empire, including the Roman Imperial cult, the various mystery religions, monotheistic religions, such as Neoplatonism and Gnosticism, and more locally localized ethnic religions practiced both in, inside and outside the empire. During the Middle Ages, the term was adapted to refer to religions practiced outside the former Roman Empire, such as Germanic paganism, Slavic paganism, and Baltic paganism. I mean, Jesus, that's a lot of paganism. <laughs> in other words, think yeah. about this. Yeah. Anything, exactly. anything, any religion was considered pagan. Think of the Greco-Roman religions, the Roman Empire, in and outside the Roman Empire, the Roman Imperial cult, Neoplatonism, Gnosticism, ethnic religions, you know, all the religions of the Middle Ages, Germanic paganism, Slavic paganism, all of these were considered pagan. Okay? Now, once again, there's the negative connotation to the word pagan. But, as it goes on to say... From the point of view of the early Christians, these religions all qualified as ethnic or Gentile, ethnicos, gentilis, the term translating yeah. to goyim. Yeah. Yeah. And the deeper you go into your uh, research and study, uh, you'll find that it all comes back round to the same peoples, to the same agendas. And then you look at the certain peoples in certain places of power, certain places of influence. Oh, what a coincidence. They're there as well. They founded it, even. Oh, no, well, well, well they changed their name so that, you know, it's more Americanized and uh, it's not as obvious, but... That's that's this is this is the game being played is uh, the puppet masters. The, it, it's it's pretty fucking obvious, but for 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 the goyim, it, it, it's it's not very obvious. They're just entertained and entrained and indoctrinated into. Uh, more and more and more numbness and less and less humanness. I'm not going to go too deep into this right now because uh, everything has its time and place. 
but uh, right now we are in the age of the D occult the de occulting of this occulted world that we find ourselves in you want to reclaim your uh, sovereignty well you don't you don't do that just just with love and light or these new agey shit which I'm sure is uh if you look back at the foundations, blam, with everything, you're going to come back to the same kinds of people, and it's, 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 it doesn't even matter, Jew, whatever, it doesn't, it, that, that doesn't matter, it, what matters is the, the mentalities, the, the few that have propagated this system that now has its tentacles around the entire world and we are in a snare we are in a trap but also and this isn't a doom and gloom shit here uh, this is just for people to wake up we are also in a place where those systems are collapsing in upon themselves they're destroying themselves because of how they were set up what they were set up to engage now that engagement is it's like that system can't help itself to go into the very thing that's going to flip it upside down and inside out and turn it into something that is Marty Leeds essentially it is de occulting the nature of the reality that you find yourself in as in nature as in the unnatural world that you have been uh, born into later rendered as paganists so synonymous with the term goyim is the term pagan so, meanwhile, while Christians are going around slandering paganism and things like that, they, I don't think they realize how closely interrelated Christianity is to paganism in terms of the Jews. Yeah. So, then it, so, let me read this one more time. From the point of view of the early Christians, these religions all qualified as ethnic or Gentile. Ethnicos, Gentilis, the term translating to goyim. Yeah. Later rendered as paganists, in contrast with Second Temple Judaism. In contrast with, with the supremacy of Judaism, all these other religions were considered pagan, paganist, or goyim. Does it, is it starting to make sense now? Isn't this how it works on uh, all levels? With separation. The, uh, the team mentality, this or that mentality. You label something a certain thing and you convince enough people over time to believe, belie, enliven the lie. And then it doesn't matter about the essential essence of that thing anymore and as far as the mentality of, of people in that time what matters is what they choose to focus on the lie that they have been led to believe so this is what we're coming out of right now people we're coming out of the lie which is the occulted nature of our reality Try not to get too caught up in the, to, into the Jew aspect, even though, because I, I kind of feel like this is a trap too. This is kind of like a, a red flag once you start to realize like just how uh, prevalent uh, the Jew, uh, the Jewish nature, the Jewish uh, 
level of control. And once you start to speak out about that, then you, you're going to have a label put on you and you're going to be blacklisted or softly uh, banned or whatever. But Marty is out here just fucking killing it. So, yeah. Like, dude. <laughs> he's, uh... Even past the numbers, he, he's hinting at, like, where this code is. Where... Where the codings are, even in the Bible. Like, wh what these, these things are hinting at. Not, not outside, but inside of ourselves. He gets down to the basics of it, with the numerology, and the etymology, and the coatings, and where it's all pointing to. So just try to remember like the pyramid scheme because this is a scheme that we live in and the capstone just like on the dollar bill is apart from the rest of the pyramid and this is where the very few percentage, the, the, the very few actual people that have been running the show reside away, disconnected from the rest of the the masses, the dumbed down masses. And this this is just how it is with, with everything. It's not a one it's not a group mentality kind of a thing. It's a select few mentality. There's a select few within, maybe, potentially a group. That are controlling that group. And then that group upon another group and so on and so on. Until you get into the corporate world. And the corporate real. religions, beast religions. And what do what do Jews think about or what do Jews think about Christ today? Let's listen to Mr. Shapiro. You know, from from a Jewish point of view, we don't believe in the divinity of Christ. I right. think that the, there you can make an argument that the the gospels which were written He was just a prophet and right. significant no 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 we don't even believe he was a prophet. What do you think he was? What do you guys I, think? I mean I what I what do I think he was historically I think he was a Jew who tried to lead a revolt against the Romans and got killed for his trouble. Just like a lot of other Jews at that time who were crucified for trying to lead revolts against the Roman and got killed for their trouble. So he became legend and story and it became a bigger and bigger deal as time went on. Yeah, he had a group of followers and then that gradually grew and then do you think there he was resurrected? A, no, that's not that's not a Jewish belief. Okay, I just want to check. Yeah, no, we're, we're not into, <laughs> you know, we're not into the miracle stories. No, that's, that's no? not, no. Do you have any miracles? No, not, not, not by Jesus. No? They're, they're, they're and, I, and I haven't watched uh, this part yet, so this is, <laughs> I was just going off on Joe Rogan. Oh my gosh. And then Ben Shapiro, uh, he has a lot of uh, wit and sharpness but ultimately uh the foundations that he draws upon are well he he speaks of them for himself uh the answer is always going to be presented to you within the question within the image so the only thing that you need to do is learn how to discern for yourself what is real what is what is truth Now, what he's saying right there in, in the uh, terminology of Jesus, that, that character, um, that image has become 
in egregor, like I said in my one of my previous videos, uh, religious egregors, to where uh, it doesn't even matter the truth anymore because you get enough people believing and feeling into something like that in and of itself creates a new thing. So, uh, Jesus isn't what he was, he is what he is currently, as is every image, everything that's imagined and felt by a mass amount of people and imageries coalescing and being combined and constructed. But the original story, uh, Uh, I'm I'm not getting into that <laughs> right now. It should be pretty fucking obvious. With people that have the ears to hear through the bullshit and the eyes to see into the light, into the darkness to find the light within themselves. You want to yeah, you've got Moses splitting the sea and all that. What do you think happened there? What do I think happened there? Yeah. Well, I'll go with the Maimonidean explanation that there was, a, I mean, it says in the Bible there was a strong east wind. Uh, so there's a naturalistic explanation for a physical phenomenon. That makes sense. Right. So that Maimonides makes sense. Read. Dumbass. Okay. So you heard it there. So basically, what is Jesus, according to Jews, wasn't resurrected, not even a prophet. Essentially, just a common criminal in the Roman Empire. That's, all <laughs> That's what that. So, an entire religion. That well, and even amongst Christians, uh, uh, the Christians at least that that do a little bit of, of more of research than than go to church. Uh, the Christ is, is is a rebel, a rebel energy. And this is not untrue. But uh, ultimately, whenever you're talking about Christianity or even the Bible, you're talking about an encoding, a, a coding of... And, and Marty Leeds just, just does this uh, more beautifully and perfectly than, than any human being I've ever come across in uh, translating... How these codings are trying to hint at and tell you once you decode and de occult just how special you are, just how special this nature of this reality is, just how divine it is, not just through the numbers, but through the synchronicities, through the correlations. Right here, right now, where we're at in this time period, you can find out for yourself, not even just inwardly, but if, if you allow your intuition to guide you, you can be led to things to, that help you realize just how special you are. Just how special we all are. Just what our true, true potentiality is. The, the truth of our origins. The occulted. Shown in plain sight. And, and oftentimes this is going to be preceded by a epiphany by a immense feeling that happens within so first it happens within then we are able to glean upon what those emotions and feelings were hinting at were guiding us to it their emotional guide guideposts your emotional guidance system 
And the cleaner you are within, the clearer that connection is going to be, the clearer the signal is going to be to where you can intuit your reality and find and happen upon things that help you understand the connectivity, the truth. Christians, you know, I mean, how many millions of Christians are all over the world, right? That adamantly and vehemently believe in their, their Savior and, and their prophet and things like that. And the Jew, they don't even recognize them. So they don't even recognize that religion. How many Christians out there absolutely recognize Judaism, right? So that's kind of a double standard. So here's Ben, ben Shapiro, small hand Ben there, and he's literally going out and saying that, Okay, and just real quick, um, he showed before this that, uh, and, and and if you haven't realized this yet, and I mean, I'm kind of surprised, I mean, I've called YouTube, Jewtube, many a time, and not necessarily been uh, chastised for it yet, but he makes a very clear point to where, just on media in general, social media, if you chastise the Jews, uh, that will not stand. If you make fun of and chastise Christ, not just Jesus, but like, I mean, yes, that figure, but ultimately what's that, what that's hinting at is the Christ within. If you do that, that's perfectly fine. That that in and of itself should should be a pretty damn clear indicator. What's going on? Jesus wasn't even a prophet. Wasn't resurrected, anything like that. Okay. So, now when you see that, and you see that two Jews, the Coens, that created the Big Lebowski, they in inject Bunny, a whore, Right? A girl will suck your dick for a thousand dollars. She's got no... Okay, just for a little context here. He was talking about how... Right before this... Uh, how porn, even, that industry is ran by the Jews. And how... How many Jews are in there. And, uh... I was not aware of that. Until he said it. And I thought about it for a second. And, of course. Yes. And that's a whole nother topic, you know, uh, of uh, the idea of sex, the idea of uh, unhealthy relationships with, with anything and everything. But with that certain thing, um, that's very controlled and that has been uh, on a level of degradation that's we're getting back to the point of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah in the olden times, and everything's coming back around. It's, it's always uh, cyclical, and, and uh, but this time's quite a bit different than the last times, as in enough of us have. Spread the awareness to where we're, you can liken it to where we are building a bridge that's uh, humanity can cross during this time of. Uh, that's kind of like into uh, the next mud flood that's going to happen. But this time it's going to be not as extreme and it's going to be blatantly obvious as if you haven't been if you haven't been privy to it yet, more and more things are becoming blatantly obvious and this is for a reason. This is for us. For for more people to wake up to. The obvious fucking manipulation and occultism that has been going on. 
no integrity. She's a swindler. She's a thief, right? She, she you know, hangs out with pornographers and all this other stuff, and she just happens to be named Bunny. And if you understand symbolism at all, what's Bunny related to? Yeah. Easter. What's Easter related to? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. What else do uh, the Jews think about Jesus? Let's watch this. There is a special antagonism between the Talmud and Jesus. The Talmud attacks him everywhere it can, even his mother. Mary, the Talmud says, was a whore who made it with carpenters. <laughs> Just the descendant of princes and governors played the harlot with carpenters. Jesus, according to this article, was considered one of the three worst enemies of Judaism who came to an ignoble end. Mm. The Talmud says they subjected him to four deaths, stoning, Burning, decapitation, and strangling. The Talmud also. It's also very interesting. Uh, if you look into uh, old Rasputin, Rasputin was also very hard to kill. Funny how uh, some of us are diehards out here. So says he is now in hell, punished with boiling hot excrement. Christians, as followers of the false prophet Jesus, also deserve their death. The Jewish Encyclopedia again recaps the Talmud's position. A Gentile observing the Sabbath deserves death. Wow. All right, so that's probably enough, right? I mean, Mary's a harlot and a whore. Jesus is boiling in a pot of shit. <laughs> uh, he was stoned. He was decapitated. Kicked around. All that sort of stuff. So not only not only in the New Testament that was written by Greeks, right? I mean, it was written originally in Greek. They were saying that, hey, we have this story of Jesus that he was going to be, uh, you know, not, you know, death and resurrection, and he was killed by the Jews. So not only do we have that story in the New Testament, we have in the Talmud as well that the Jews killed Jesus as well. So there's no question whatsoever yeah. at all that the Jews are proud of the fact, or at least these people that claim the Jews, the Pharisees back in the day, that have continued on through the Talmud, whoever the fuck these people are, people want to be like, well, they're the, not they're not the real Jews or whatever. Okay, whoever the fuck these people are, exactly. they know for a fact that they, they didn't like the, Mr. Jesus Christ. They killed him, and they're proud of it. So. And, it's not, and, and really, it's not, it's not about the figure of, of the Jesus or the Christ. It's, it's about... What it, what it had become, and, and the killing of it is a killing of an awareness. This is the purpose of the occult nature of hiding things in plain sight. Okay? So, whenever you're seeing uh, all this stuff to where, you know, the media... It is portraying a certain kind of imagery. Look beyond, behind and inside of the imagery to where the true meaning is. You're trying to stop the Christ of being from arising, but it's already arisen. <laughs> Uh, the phoenix has already uh, come about from the ashes that you want to create. But guess what? We've already arisen from those future ashes. So that doesn't necessarily need to happen. And it won't happen. Like... Like these people have set up for it to happen. No matter what your belief structures and belief systems are, trust in your inner guidance, trust in your feelings, trust. And what you can experience for yourself. Get clear on the inside. And that's 
signal will sharpen and enhance. And you'll be able to decode the bullshit. The babble. So yeah, check this guy out. Check out yourselves. Go out in nature and just listen. Just be. Just feel. Peace.